السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله So let's get on to part 3 of our series How the Quran teaches us to behave So today we're on verse 36 of Surah An-Nisa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us وَعْبُدُ الله. Worship Allah What we're going to see in this verse are all of the etiquettes and courtesies that we have to show one another, but how all of this begins, this whole discipline and training of how courteous and nice we should be to, towards each other, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to teach us now how that begins, and when it doesn't happen, what are the reasons why it's difficult for people to be courteous and kind to one another. So courtesy begins, love, appreciation, kindness begins with our relationship with Allah. So the first thing Allah says is, take care of your relationship with me. Wa'budullah, wa la tushriku bihi shay'a. Worship Allah and don't associate with Him. So once you make sure that your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is good, now move on to the next one. After Allah, wa bil walidayni ihsana. And be good and exceptionally nice. بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Ihsan is the starting point uh, of how we treat our parents, but it's the peak of Iman when we're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is amazing. So Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us that when it comes to your parents, you have to be extra courteous, extra nice, extra loving, patient, caring, all of those wonderful qualities. Once you take care of your parents, what comes next? Allah Azza wa Jal continues and He says, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا so the first thing is the people who possess closeness to you. So yes, it refers to relatives, but it also refers to like your best friends. You know, the word qurb in Arabic actually refers to when, when you're talking about uh, your relationship with somebody. On the one hand, it refers to close relatives, but it can also refer to people who know things about you that the average layman person wouldn't know. So you share certain secrets, you invite your best friends to your house, you know, you spend a lot of time together, you talk about your personal life. There's a there's an element, there's a sense of qurb or closeness that you have with certain individuals, despite that they're not your families. So this ayah is also calling out that you have to be extra courteous and nice to the people who have this closeness to you, which I think is absolutely incredible. Then the ayah continues. وَذِلْقُرْبَ وَالْيَتَامَ The orphans, وَالْمَسَاكِينَ And those who are in need. وَبِنِ السَّبِيلِ And the traveler as well. You know, it's really interesting that when we think about travelers, don't think about just who's sitting beside you on a plane, but also who's sitting beside you on a train. Courtesy to the traveler is not just serving them and giving them, you know, things to, to, that they need to make their life easy, but it's also just being kind in the sense that, okay, if you're sitting on a bus, there's an empty seat, you offer it to somebody. You, you know, it's not like how many parts of the world where people are fighting who should sit down first. But for in an Islamic society, it actually goes, it goes like this. It kind of sounds like, okay, why don't you take the seat? The person will be like, no, 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 you, tafaddal, go ahead. And now you're actually fighting on who should be sitting first. So that courtesy, it goes and it's extended beyond what you and I are accustomed to. And that's what this ayah is calling us towards. It's calling us towards that to show and express that additional step of courtesy and kindness. And it's amazing to me that how all of this starts. It starts off with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you take care of your relationship with Him, then you take care of your parents. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us is that despite these two categories that deserve our best, it's not far off with what the rest of society and community deserve from us as well. So the closeness to the people, your best friends and your relatives, extra courtesy and kindness towards them. Then you have uh, the yatama, wal masakin, wa bin sabil. So the orphans, the miskin, the needy one, and those who are travelers, wal masakin, wa bin sabil, wa bidil qurba. Allah subhanahu wa taala then tells us about our close neighbors. Our close neighbors, this is, these are the people that literally live beside you. So by the way, dhil qurba, when we say closest to you, it could also refer to anybody living on your street. So you're generally good with people even living on the same street or in the same village as you. 
but wabithil qurba or wadhil qurba, it's also now talking about your close neighbor. So the person sitting beside you that sees you going into your car, in and out of your house, be extra courteous and extra kind to them. Wa malakat aymanukum, and also what your right hand possesses. So this ayah is actually standing up for the rights and kindness for people who probably don't have a voice, who are not always able to express that, hey, you know, I didn't like the way that you talked to me. I didn't like the way that you treated me. I didn't like the way that you acted. They don't always have the ability to say those things. And so as a result, this ayah calls upon us as believers, as people of Iman, to take the step forward and really be examples to society to show the courteousness and, and kindness that believers must have. And all of this starts off with our relationship that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the ayah concludes. And here's why, where I want to spend some time on. It's how the verse concludes. The verse concludes, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا Allah does not like the ones who are Amongst the Mukhtal and Fakhur. Mukhtal comes from the word Khailun. Khailun actually means a beautiful horse that's just riding around and showing off its beautiful, you know, its beautiful color, its speed, its strength, its physique, all of those things. That's what Mukhtal is. And Fakhur is when you're deluded. It's when you've created this perception or this image about yourself and you work hard to preserve and project that image. So you make sure that you only wear certain types of clothing, you drive a certain car, you can never be seen in a Toyota or something like that. You can never be seen in any other brands except like high-end brand clothings and shoes and things like that. So you work hard to maintain that. And even the way that you speak and the, the, the attitude and the tone of voice, when you do these things intentionally in order to project an image of somebody that you're really not, that's called fakhur. So Allah says, muhtal and fakhur. So the person who's a show-off, but then the person who's delusional about themselves. Allah says that He does not appreciate nor does He love any Muslim or believer that has qualities like this. So now let's put this ayah together. The ayah started off with the worship of Allah. Then it ended off with two qualities that pretty much they stop you. They are barriers between you and courtesy and kindness. You can't be humble when you're muhtal and fakhur. You, it's impossible to be kind and appreciate people and show respect and honor to them and just love and care for another human being if you have muhtal and fakhur. You know, I could remember, obviously not this year, but previous years, when we have police officers and we have security guards at the masjid and, um, you know, they're directing traffic on Jum'ah day, on Eid Salah and so on, just because of the zahma, the crowd, right? I could remember that some Muslims, like, you know, they they got like an allergic reaction when they saw that it was like a kafir security guard or police officer. They're like, what are they doing here? SubhanAllah. No, be nice to people. That's what this ayah is about. Just be nice. Say, thank you for your service. Thank you. You know, you're doing a great job. I really appreciate that you're here, keeping us safe, making sure the traffic flows well. I appreciate that from you. Just being courtesy, courteous to people is a part of our Iman. This ayah highlights that if you are good to Allah and you are good to your parents and the people closest to you, then the only thing that prevents you from living that way is muhtal and fakhur, which is pretty much being ignorant. Being ignorant. Pretending that you're somebody you're not. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in more than one place in the entire Quran tells us that this is something that he does not love. And so this is why this particular verse is one of those verses of the Qur'an that really drives home some of the things that Allah looks for and calls us to, to exercise uh, when we're in any culture, in any society, of any community, in any part of the world. Uh, some countries I've been to, as soon as I land at the airport, I remember uh, I would go through customs. When I finish with customs, as I'm walking out, I'll look for, you know, the driver or I get into a cab. And some of them would be asking me questions like, where are you from? What are you doing here? How's life? How's people in Canada? Blah, blah, blah. And we just have a conversation. And at first, it's a little bit awkward because people just simply don't do that. Courtesy is one of the things that's almost completely lost and forgotten in culture and society today. It's very sporadic 
that when you see somebody that goes out of their way and, and exercise that extra level of courtesy and care and attention to you, it's, it's like it makes your entire day. How do you feel when you do something nice for somebody else? Don't you feel good? And this is what the ayah is calling us towards. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْعُسْرَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly tells us that whoever strives to do things right, you give and you give with consciousness of Allah. And you give with husna, you give with righteousness, you have a good clear intention that you want the best for somebody else. Allah will always make your life easy for you. And that's the thing, that's the feeling that we get when we are nice and we do good things for others. It makes us feel good. How do we feel when we do something horrible or do something terrible? Like you have to be an exceptionally evil person to intentionally or willingly hurt somebody, whether it be emotionally, psychologically, or physically, and not feel any remorse, not feel any regret. And these are some of the things that you know we should be thinking about when recently when uh, a, a, a young black man was, was killed by a police officer and there's a lot of controversy why that happened a lot of discussion a lot of anger but i always imagine myself if i was that police officer you know how, how would i feel it would it would rip me apart like where's the remorse where's the guilt where's that feeling okay at the end of the day at least re if he did a crime if he did something wrong then follow protocol or restrain and then deal with things you know, according to protocol but no, for some reason, I mean, it just spirals out of control and lots of things that are unnecessary ends up happening. And the poor guy, as well as many other, uh, many others, they lose their lives this way. And subhanAllah, it really just makes you think about where, as, uh, as mankind, as human beings, what level we've reached in terms of just simply caring for one another. And then the flip side of that story is, y you'll see every now and then on the news, like, for example, a taxi driver picks up somebody and that person left their purse in the car. As soon as the, the taxi driver drops off the passenger, they left a bag, they left their purse, they left their wallet, what have you. And the taxi driver just decides to look into the wallet, sees the address, calls up the person, what have you, says, hey, look, you left your wallet or deliver it to their house. And before you know it, they're on front page newspapers, their headline news. Oh my God, they actually returned the wallet. They returned the purse. Are you kidding me? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? And so it's glorified and it's like, oh my God, subhanAllah, how, how amazing it is. You actually returned something that didn't belong to you, to the, to the rightful owner. And subhanAllah, in our deen, at least in an Islamic society, these are fundamentals of how human beings must live. These are the ways that these are the things that Allah expects from us. You know, it's one thing that subhanAllah, what the books say and what people do. And so I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to really internalize and receive this ayah in the best way possible. That we could exercise it, that we could practice it, we could share it with others. And even with people who know nothing about the Quran, they will see this ayah in our character in our personality, in our behavior, in our etiquettes. They see this ayah in, in you and in me. So this is what's really important when we talk about how the Qur'an teaches us to behave. It's not how the Qur'an dictates our life. Uh, as a matter of fact, for me personally, having Allah tell me what to do and what to say is like a bless. It's, it's the greatest blessing on earth. I am perfectly fine that the one who designed and created me the Khaliq and the Al Musawwir, the one who fashioned me and the one who created me, I'm perfectly okay with him telling me where I should go and what I should do. And so it gives me that reassurance that I'm always gonna be doing the right thing and be on the right track, inshaAllah ta'ala. And so that's what this that's what this verse is all about. So I hope and I pray that you really can appreciate this verse for what it is. Uh, take some time to really listen to this, listen to it again, so that you can find where in this verse you fit in perfectly and continue to grow and improve and manifest your etiquettes and your and the good qualities in you so that people see at the end of the day just being a believer is all about being courteous and kind to one another so wherever you are be courteous and be kind to one another jazakumullah khairan everyone take care wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh